Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. A lot of uh, fascinating stuff to cover today, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC Chairman Heath Tarbert, believes the crypto world will see Ethereum futures contracts sometime in 2020. Speaking at Georgetown University in a fireside chat during the first day of the DC FinTech Week, Tarbert told moderator Chris Brummer that he absolutely believes Ether futures could trade in the next 6 to 12 months. He said, I'd say it is likely that you will see a futures contract in the next 6 months to a year, he told Brummer, though he cautioned that simply launching a futures contract isn't the be-all and end-all. He went on to add, The volume to which it'll trade... No idea. That's where the market decides, but my guess is that we've we've provided at least a little bit more clarity on Ether's eligibility for futures contracts. My guess is market participants will consider that. And quote, Tarbert first declared Ether a commodity earlier this month, announcing that his agency would be willing to approve futures contracts on the world's second largest cryptocurrency by market cap. However, it remains unclear who might actually be interested in offering Ether futures contracts to the, to the U.S. market. Almost said the world. Speaking to reporters after his appearance on stage, Tarbot noted that, at least to his knowledge, no company has applied to launch such a product. And I assume mainly that is because the information that we had before was very unclear. And this is why I believe, uh, and it, it, it's going to get weird in this video, so just be prepared. Uh, this is why I believe why they made sure to announce uh, in full legality, or rather... Uh, you know, just a full answer uh, as to exactly what Ether is for the cryptocurrency market. Still no word yet. And the other article that we had before at the beginning of this month, if time even flies that quickly, my goodness, where it was announced that Ether is officially a commodity. It said in the article that apparently, I, th I think the wording of it said that they were working on two more coins uh, to clarify to clarify exactly what these coins were as well as far as securities or uh, commodities. Now, Here's where it gets a bit crazy. And when I normally say like the next story ties directly into this story, it ties a, a, a bit too strongly into it. So this popped up and I saw this and I almost smacked my forehead because it seemed so logical and I just didn't think of it before. Christopher Giancarlo, who left the US Commodity Futures Trading Commission at the end of his five year term as chairman in April, told Coindesk in an interview, he said, and I quote, one of the untold stories of the past few years is that the CFTC, the Treasury, the SEC, and the National Economic Council director at the time, Gary Cohn, believed that the launch of Bitcoin futures would have the impact of popping the Bitcoin bubble, and it worked. Why, end quote, why is this significant? I always mention often, whenever things are happening within the cryptocurrency market, I always say, I feel like there's manipulation going on, but we can never really, we're not part of the conversation. We're never really part of the, 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 the upper crust, if you will, the people who are actually making the decisions. And I've mentioned multiple times before, even this year, if you remember last year, I said, I think it's very odd that Bitcoin is floating around $3,000, $4,000. I said, there's no reason for Bitcoin to be under 10,000. I said, what? What's happening? What's taking place behind the scenes uh, that's causing Bitcoin to go down so low? Even right now, the, the actual fundamentals for Bitcoin uh, show that nothing should be in the way of Bitcoin being at least twelve to 15,000 right now, just based off of actual usage and the, uh, the things that have been built alongside Bitcoin. In a speech at the Pantera Summit in San Francisco on Monday, Giancarlo elaborated further, saying that Bitcoin's dramatic price run-up in December 2017 was the first major bubble following the 2008 financial crisis. That's why the Trump administration acted in concert to address it in a pro-market manner, he said. Bitcoin futures listed by the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Now pay attention. Bitcoin futures listed by the CME and the CBOE were announced by the CFTC on the 1st of December 2017 and went live on the 18th. Bitcoin's price peaked at nearly $20,000 one day earlier on the 17th before falling 
subsequently for the weeks after the futures contracts were actually finally listed. He said, we saw a bubble building and we thought the best way to address it was to allow the market to interact with it. Giancarlo told the crowd gathered at the Ritz Carlton on Knob Hill. So what it comes down to uh, in, in no uncertain terms, he also says this somewhere around here as well. He says without shorts, like being able to uh, bet against the market, a market has no pessimists. If you do believe it's a ridiculous price, but you don't own, there's no way to express that view. If you don't have that derivative, then all you've got are believers and it's a believer's market. Unless this man uh, was under the influence of something, the only words I can kind of find, uh, we can assume that he's telling the truth. This means that we now know for certain that the CFTC, SEC, people within the government, National Economic Council, all saw Bitcoin's price and decided to allow the launch of Bitcoin futures to be able to crash the price of Bitcoin. Isn't that insane? Isn't, I, I, I showed this to my friend last night and it was kind of one of those like where your mind explodes in all directions. I've been mentioning for a very long time. I said, why? I understand the market will go down or markets can have down periods or the hype just may not be there or something may happen to the machine or something may happen to the technicals or something may happen to so-and-so. Maybe it's the summertime. Maybe people are outside. Maybe people simply aren't trading as much. The amount of good news that we've gotten since at least the middle of 2018 has been astronomical. The cryptocurrency space has grown a lot faster and quicker and more than anything I could have possibly imagined over the course of a year. It's actually a little scary exactly how quickly the cryptocurrency market has grown. To find out, this is why I said, if, 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 he's, if he's the former head of the CFTC, one can only assume uh, the paperwork was hitting his desk and he knew exactly what was going on. We now know for a fact that Bitcoin's price was going too high for them. And the only way that they could get Bitcoin's price to go down was to, um, was to pop it. Uh, the also, <laughs> life is crazy. Uh, for those of you not looking at the screen, I'm sure a lot of you remember this. It says, November 7th, 2017, CME Group's Leo Melamed said, we will tame Bitcoin. At the time, this made no sense. I remember discussing this in, in the video and uh, I want to say foolhardily, just in general. I think because Bitcoin had gone from 900 and it was around maybe $10,000 at this point. We were all like, what do you mean tame Bitcoin? You can't tame Bitcoin. They did it. They think of a... Think of a scenario where I can, and I, and I assume this is not only um, leaders within the U.S. as well, because remember the news that we also had during the beginning, I mean the very beginning of 2018. If you look at my old videos, for some reason there was a situation where every week, and it was normally on a Monday or a Tuesday, for about a good 12 weeks, Different countries kept on coming forward, talking about we're going to ban Bitcoin, we're going to restrict Bitcoin, you can't buy Bitcoin, you can't hold Bitcoin, anyone who has Bitcoin is going to go to jail. We've heard it all. Multiple different countries, and I think only one of these countries has really slightly followed through. The rest of the countries have more so less been kind of like a, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we said that, but we, we're just not going to do it. It was, it was too coordinated. There was no, if, if, if countries are afraid of something, they'll announce everything at once. Uh, but the three months of announcements of bans, this, stopping that, can't use it. Anyone who has a, a bank account linked to this uh, has, has their account shut down. It all makes a lot of sense. Well, um, if nothing else, we know the truth, or at least part of the truth. I can only imagine what other discussions or conversations uh, had been going on. The main point about talking about the, the Ether futures is that, for, and this is 10% speculation, 90% truthalation. It's not a thing. Uh, we know that Ethereum has been um, coddled, is being held closely by organizations, banks, institutions who wish to build things on top of blockchain. For some reason, the last couple of months, we've seen a lot of attention being paid to Ether. Even when Ether's price was going down, 
We heard of major companies, organizations, whatever you want to call them, launching, building, creating, linking up to, on top of Ether, Ether side chains, Ether this. It was always, Ethereum was always mentioned. And then about a week after that, we had the indication, finally, officially, that Ethereum or Ether was a commodity and not a security. And now we're getting information that they want to launch Ether Futures, which then ties directly into what I was just saying. Are they then doing this to simply short Ether? Do they think that Ether is too high? Do they think that Ether could potentially in the future also... Re this is why the time frame is also interesting as well. Within the next 6 to 12 months, they believe that one could be launched. Is it that people are already submitting paperwork or are expected to submit paperwork when the next bull market happens in an effort to bring the price of Ether down to make sure that the price is also tamed and doesn't get too out of control as too many people around the world are also then building on top of or using Ether as their main platform. It's it's very interesting. When I, and, I, and I, part of my confusion will be is that this won't be the most discussed topic of the next six weeks. It just won't be. Uh, some other news will come up about Justin Sun or something like that and everybody on Twitter will completely lose their minds. Not the fact that we have information from the head of the CFTC, the former head, excuse me, it doesn't even matter. He could have been the head 10 years ago. The fact that he knew this information, that Bitcoin's price was brought down in conjunction with it going up, i.e. it was going up too high. Imagine for a moment, if Bitcoin's price hadn't been, and I don't want to say manipulated, I'm going to say manipulated with a very small M, very tiny M. So it looks like manipulated. I wonder where Bitcoin's price would be. I wonder where the world would be as far as Bitcoin adoption, cryptocurrency adoption, even for altcoins. I wonder how high altcoins would be. This is why, uh, and this is uh, my opinion, a lot of altcoins have taken heavier hits than Bitcoin, and I assume that's because of Bitcoin's uh, market cap and strength and liquidity and so et cetera, et cetera, what have you. A lot of other coins have been, a lot of coins that have been touted as the future or have seen multiple integrations or have the most money and stuff behind them have also experienced dramatic price crashes as well, um, even with a lot of people being in those markets. So we also know, um, tying directly into this as well, that during 2018, that a lot of the market, we had this information for a long time, even the people moving coins, uh, the whales and so and so and so, uh, forcing people out of the market. If you get the price low enough, you scare people enough to get the coins, you know, to, for them to relinquish their coins. And then we, we see, remember the news that we had where we saw that there were huge major sell-offs happening during the course of 2018, but we kept on having news from Coinbase uh, and the other big company who had over-the-counter uh, buying that every single week they were doing more sales, i.e. people were purchasing more uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies every single week than the previous week before, even as prices were toppling down. I don't think we'll ever get to the actual, not to the bottom of this, I, I don't think we'll ever be aware of just how deep this all goes. Uh, you kind of assume, especially being in, th 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 this is why I always say, Try to pay attention to things that always happen around you as well. Not in like a, not, not in a paranoid way, but more like a, we tend to only think that for some reason that we're the only people who are into cryptocurrencies or looking at cryptocurrency news, understand where cryptocurrencies are, where cryptocurrencies are going. Like we, we, we think that we're in a bubble and we forget very often that the idea of a digital currency that was created 10 years ago going to $20,000 is also a threat to monetary policies around the world and that they are actively also paying attention to these prices as well and trying to figure out ways to either push them down, destroy them, or find ways to get the prices down low enough that they can also acquire them. It is very fascinating. I'm um, not happy about the news, but I'm happy that we have this news. Because if, if that's what happened within the States, just imagine what happened in the other 189 countries on this planet. Anyway, uh, from this topic, let us move on. Next up, Ripple has announced 
Three new appointments to its global regulatory team, and the company will be joining the Blockchain Association. So for those of you who don't know, the people from Ripple are very well connected. I think a lot of people, especially those who may not like Ripple, may not like XRP, uh, don't really know this, and I think they don't understand it as much. But if you do or have been into Ripple or XRP or X anything at some point during your life, you probably understand um, that they have connections unlike anything else within the cryptocurrency space. Per a 22nd of October blog post, Ripple has onboarded four new members, Greg Phillips, Michelle Bond, Ron Hammond, and Susan Friedman. Friedman? I'll say Friedman to its global regulatory team based in Washington, D.C. Michelle Bond will also sit on the board of the Blockchain Association. They also, I didn't cover this news because it was them opening a new office. Cool. Uh, the people from Ripple opened up a brand new office in Washington, D.C. The significance is, is that they're trying to, they didn't even have to get close enough to regulators. It's more so they want an office there because uh, they know everybody. So here's where it gets very fascinating. Phillips joined Ripple from the U.S. Treasury Department where he served as counselor to the secretary and worked on the executive order 13772, a presidential executive order that establishes a series of standards designed to manage regulatory actions that impact the financial sector, as well as intends to advance economic growth. So they have someone who makes rules or made rules to impact the financial sector, as well as the advanced economic growth from the U.S. Treasury Department now on their team. Prior to Ripple, Bond served as the global head of policy at blockchain and head of global regulatory affairs and public policy at Bloomberg and senior counsel at both the SEC and the U.S. Banking Committee. Is it, is it becoming clear now exactly how well connected they are? Friedman worked as the senior advisor to the CFTC chair Heath Tarbert in his previous capacity as Treasury's assistant secretary for international markets while at Ripple, she will serve as the International Policy Council. Ron Hammond joins Ripple as a manager of government relations, having previously served as the legislative assistant to Representative Warren Davidson. The rest isn't really important as, as far as the, the rest of the article. Uh, it's more so, I want answers. I can't put it in a nicer way. Hmm. <laughs> Ripple is far too well connected. And I assume this may also have to do with why we've seen a, a lack of news as of very late. I think Ripple itself has become, and you can disagree with me if you want. Uh, I, can, I can read this back to you again so you can see that you're probably mistaken. They're so well connected. I think they're becoming their own entity in the corner that no other coin can trust you can talk about their board members you can talk about centralization you can talk about this you can talk about the community you can talk about the coins they have locked up i've seen it all i've seen all the articles but there's no other cryptocurrency project out there that's this well connected and by what i mean i want answers is when you're this well connected one can assume that integration of some sort is happening behind the scenes they're all these people would not be joining them or even want to uh, present their resume or their CV to them to say, hey, I want to join over here, right here, right now, um, if this wasn't going to go somewhere. However, um, maybe it's because the markets have been going down. We have not received any, um, this is where Ripple and or XRP are going news explicitly, uh, but it always feels like something is brewing, but it looks like the pot is just boiling no one's taking it off and telling us exactly what's happening, but this is just my, um, I want to say impatience. I have a lot of it. I want things to happen now, but hopefully within a year, this all makes a lot of sense. Anyway, that's absolutely insane, especially even if you look at their other board members. They are, they're basically their own banking company right now. They have everyone from around the world on their seats they're basically the people who make monetary policies around the world. They sit on their uh, board. Anyway, let's move on. Next up, Binance is soon to launch its first fiat to cryptocurrency trading pairs. Speaking at the open and here's, okay, it's kind of weird. It's, it's, it's a kind of a weird article, a weird situation. Speaking at the Open Innovations 2019 conference in Moscow on Monday, 
Chang Peng Cao confirmed that fiat options are on the way, starting with the Russian ruble. He said we're adding support for fiat trading in about two weeks or so. We should have support for Russian ruble trading direct. Until now, the company's primary service, Binance.com, has only supported crypto to crypto trading. However, it has launched local fiat gateways in Uganda, Singapore, Jersey, and most recently the United States. Binance said in this September that fiat payments were coming for over-the-counter trading, effectively bulk deals this month. However, his comment today appears to indicate that general trading on the exchange will support the new options. Uh, kind of weird for a number of reasons. Here's the actual uh, tweet of him in Moscow announcing this. Uh, the weirdest part, hmm, maybe not that weird. Uh, the most interesting part being the ruble being the first fiat to crypto trading option. Uh, one would have assumed that it would have been the dollar. It would have been the euro. It could have been the yen. It could have been the Singaporean this. It could have been something else. And I mean that not as in uh, the ruble is not as strong as the dollar. It's more like a 2018 was littered with news from Russia uh, that Russia was banning cryptocurrencies. Uh, there was a, a, a bill that said that only the very rich could own or touch cryptocurrencies. That's not a joke either. You can find it. There was also another um, thing that said, I think if you were an institutional investor, so if you were rich, you had uh, no worries about what you could do with crypto. However, if you were not rich enough, you could buy crypto, but I think your limit was at three to $5,000 equivalent per year. And also uh, the amount of bills that have tried to go through the, I want to say Russian parliament. That's probably not what it is, what, what it's called. Uh, Duma? Doma? I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, that I've tried to go through and have all been rejected, have led a lot of people to believe for the last couple of months uh, that crypto was going to be banned in some capacity within the country. Lo and behold, uh, there was an Open Innovations, which is also a very ironic name, uh, within Moscow, and the ruble is going to be the first uh, fiat to crypto trading option on Binance. So um, within the next two weeks, that apparently will be a thing. Uh, let's see what other currencies they decide to add after. But um, yeah, that's the Binance news question mark for today. Next up, Opera, the web browser, now allows making payments with Bitcoin. Directly inside the browser, the company announced the news in a press release shared with Cointelegraph on the 21st of October, detailing that Opera's 350 million users can now send and receive Bitcoin directly from the browser, as well as use the cryptocurrency for purchasing goods and services on e-commerce websites. Additionally, the browser now enables adding a Bitcoin and Tron card in the built-in crypto wallet to keep track of cryptocurrency owned. Charles Hamill, head of crypto at Opera, commented on the new future, future feature launch, saying... We believe that opening up our browser to more blockchains, including Bitcoin, is the logical next step to making our solution more relevant to anyone who has a Bitcoin crypto wallet and would like to do things with their cryptocurrencies beyond just keeping them in an account. End quote. Cool. One. Very nice. Um, 2016 would love 2019 because a lot of the stuff that we're getting right now, we thought that we would have years ago. You know, we always look back and go, oh, I wish we had it before. Now we actually have it right now. A lot of different uh, browsers are adding the capabilities of being able to pay with cryptocurrencies or keeping your crypto on their um, browser and spending and buying stuff. A couple of things. Um, some, not all. There have definitely been other browsers that have had um, hacking attempts. In the, in the digital world, nearly everything can be hacked. So uh, if you do have Opera and you plan on using this, uh, be aware that there's a possibility of your cryptocurrencies being hacked. Two, um, I don't know the inner workings of every single cr cryptocurrency wallet on every single browser that may potentially be out there. Um, however, it is probably, maybe not the best idea. I'm not sure exactly how far their encryption goes, uh, to have your cryptocurrencies on your web browser that could potentially be hacked or even more so, um, we are going to enter a world very soon where people will be restricted from using cryptocurrencies to buy certain things. It's just logically going to happen. Or even more so, um, you having to... Mm, the takeaway is 
Um, you, you, you don't want to get yourself in a situation where a company, you have your cryptocurrencies on a browser where a company could potentially hold your coins, restrict you from using your coins, or anything of the sort. However, it is nice to see that this is uh, spreading more. You may have noticed the last year, in the last 12 months from this moment, we've seen a major uptick in the amount of web browsers who now have cryptocurrency wallets or enable payments and also uh, cryptocurrency blockchain phones. So in about two years, I think things will be a bit more steady and or stable. Remember I said before, I have a three-year rule. I like when things launch. I think they're very cool, but I always wait three years uh, for... Uh, things to crumble to see if they will continue. It's a very pivotal moment. Uh, the last thing I want is for my money, for my crypto, to be on a, on a on a web browser. However, it is cool, and I think at some point in the future, with, with encryption, maybe decentralized, further blockchain web browsing platforms, it'll be as secure as the Bitcoin network. However, that's the opera news, and let's move on. Uh, for some reason, this is in, uh, you know, Bear with me. Uh, the Winklevies have been heavily in the news the last couple of uh, week. Now with an S, just a week. I'm not sure what's going on, but for some reason they're very adamant about Bitcoin once again. They already hold a huge amount of Bitcoin, so I assume maybe they're just trying to make sure that they are known and once again in the spotlight before the prices go back up. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Cameron... Winklevoss says, buy Bitcoin to escape negative yield bonds. That was on the 17th of October. A couple days later, says they said, 20 trillion reasons to own Bitcoin. Cameron Winklevoss lambasts Federal Reserve policies. And then yesterday, or rather even a couple minutes ago, uh, the Winklevoss said that Bitcoin is a source of truth. Bitcoin is more than digital gold. Uh, they said because Bitcoin is an open source software, open source software, its possibilities are boundless. I often talk about gold as a target market cap, but that's really just the beginning. It's digital gold, source of truth, etc. Not really sure uh, what's going on with them, why they're uh, trying to be more in the news as of recently, but I'm gonna assume next week they will probably also be in the news again. I mean, listen. I'd logically myself, I'd rather have the Winkle in the in, in 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 the crypto news than Peter Thiel, uh, Jamie Dimon, um, b -b -b the old guy. Can't remember his name. Why do I always forget? Warren Buffett? Why do I always forget his name? It's like buffet. Anyway, and this and someone else. I'd rather have them in the news, but I think they're uh, I think they're interesting. Let's move on. To kind of finish things off, I think this is fascinating. According to prop tech firm Liquify, an award-winning luxury hotel situation in London's affluent Mayfair district is being tokenized. The technology provider will allow people to purchase tokenized securities backed by the property. According to the company's press release, the landmark hotel is located in a redeveloped historic building with views of Hyde Park and Mayfair. Fancy. Currently owned by a consortium of Gulf families, the hotel is part of a larger real estate portfolio worth $1 billion that will be tokenized, enabling fractional sales to interested investors and allowing ownership transfer to be recorded, tracked, and traded on the blockchain. This was major news in 2018. We haven't heard a lot about from stuff like this. It's more so in the future, everything will be, eh, so they say, Everything will be digitized and tokenized. Anything that may have value to you or some other people, you can put it onto a blockchain and distribute it in billions of pieces if you decide to do so as coins are divisible because they're digital. So the, once again, the idea is, is that everything, you'll be able to own a house with you and seven of your siblings. You'll be able to own a self-driving car with you and 15 of your friends. We haven't heard much about the tokenization of a lot of these things, but um, like I said, I thought this part was kind of cool because realistically, especially if you talk about the topic of like other investments, it will be an interesting moment in about 10 years if people are able to, you and nine of your friends, all 10 of you, decide you want to buy a $1 million home somewhere to rent out an Airbnb and you can simply all just pay 100 k 
And every time that a payment is made, you get the uh, money directly to your crypto account through the blockchain and equal distributions. I, I, I find stuff like this fascinating. I love the idea of a digitized world, no matter how utopian my views may be. But yeah. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Professor Wally from Gun Bot University, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Mohair Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Brady Niels, Woody and Daisy, Triple M and J, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Crypto Joe, Bankroll Network, Adobo, Mill Louisi, Mechanic, Strange Radio Central, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Cryptopolis, Nicholas, Renault with One Piece, One Love, Damien, Setsuna, Nick Kanaya, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Crypto Beer, Shipmate, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day. Yes to Crypto. And Bodie McBoatface, thank you all very, very much for your support. I don't do this often. However, I will say something. I've started my second channel. The link is in the description for those of you who are interested. Um, I will be posting every day. I mean, I'm already insane with this channel. I, I post a lot. I'm sure you notice. It'll be the exact same for the other channel. So if you're interested, the link is in the description. At the moment, the cryptocurrency market is red. Woke up this morning, Bitcoin was below 8,000. Every couple of minutes, it, it goes above 8,000. It goes to like $8,002 or something really weird like that. No news as to why the market has gone down. It could simply be what we were talking about yesterday and the day before where people were saying or analyzing that Bitcoin was maybe at the end of a trading range, that Bitcoin looked poised for a movement, and therefore this may have been the movement. Uh, I already said I expected it to go down, uh, especially with this news over here. I can, poof, I can only imagine what, the, what they have planned to keep crypto down further. Not to, not, that, 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 that wasn't to be said on like a negative note. It's more like a... Uh, we know what's going on now kind of thing. Uh, no coin is really down or up significantly more than anything else. They're all kind of within the, the 2 to 6% down range. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, the, despite the, the price drops and the news that the market is manipulated. <laughs> hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are. Wherever you might be, I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.